Ricardo, and I'm here with Math Matters to talk to you guys about probability. Today we're going to be discussing a word problem, which is not too uncommon when discussing or teaching probability, because, you know, to be honest, word problems are almost bombarded upon students, no matter what grade or age or level of math knowledge, uh, when talking about probability. And there are always these ridiculous word problems with like absurd scenarios in which you have to demonstrate that you've learned something and you can apply the knowledge and formulas that you now know to real life scenarios or real life, although they might be a little absurd. So today we're going to have one of those such absurd word problems, or one such absurd word problem. But the purpose of this word problem is to demonstrate a very important concept and it's essential that we talk about why... Um, why we calculate it this way, and why we do this word problem this way. So first, I'll talk about the concepts we're going to be discussing. So we're going to be talking about P of A and B, where that means the probability of A and B happening, where A and B are events, because probability is likelihood of an event to occur. So we're going to be talking about the difference between probability of A and B and the probability of A or B. Now, these are essentially different, um, both in the formulas they use, because probability of A and B is the probability of A times the probability of B, as I explained in my other video, and the probability of A or B is the probability of A plus the probability of B, and that's essentially different. Um, now we're going to talk about how we can learn to differentiate, differentiate between the two and uh, discern which one we have to use. So, the word problem. In our jelly bean word problem, we have a jar of 50 jelly beans. So there are 50 total jelly beans, 8 of which are green. Now, you are allergic to the green dye that they use to make these jelly beans this color. But you don't know that yet. So this is the first time you're eating jelly beans and you don't know that you're allergic to this green dye. So you're eating three jelly beans and you could have a green jelly bean, you could have no green jelly beans, and you either find out or you don't. But we're gonna discuss what is the probability that if you have three jelly beans, eight of which are green out of 50, what is the probability that you find out you're allergic to the green jelly beans? So what is the probability you have at least one green jelly bean? So your first instinct might be to find the probability of getting it on the first try, or getting it on the third, second try, or getting it on the third try, right? Because either you get a prob uh, either you get a green jelly bean on the first try, the second try, or the third try, uh, and that makes green jelly beans, right? Well, this is incorrect, and we're going to discuss why that is. Because first of all, let's calculate that probability of these three would be probability of one plus probability of 2, plus probability of 3. Okay. Well, for the first one, we know what that is, right? We're trying to talk about what is the probability of getting a green jelly bean. So green is our how many uh, events we want to enumerate or count, and 50 is the number total. So our P1 is 8 over 50. So now you've eaten a jelly bean. Now what's your P2? Well, you may say it's a 7 over 49. But believe it or not, we've already run into a problem. Because obviously we've eaten one jelly bean from 50 to 49. That makes sense. We're eating one jelly bean, there's one less jelly bean to eat, and our denominator decreases by 1. But what about the numerator? I decreased the numerator by 1, but that's assuming that we had a jelly bean the first time. But what if we don't have a jelly bean the first time? What if we have a jelly bean the second time? Or the third time? Or the second and third time? Or the first and third time? Or all three times? How do you know? You can't know that because it's a random event. So we're finding probability of random events, therefore we can't know beforehand when you have this jelly bean. So you can't do this solely because you don't know which time you ate a green jelly bean, and you don't know if it's 8, 50th plus 7, 49 plus, let's say, 6, 48th. Because that would, that would assume that you ate a jelly bean, a green jelly bean the first two times, right? Because when we subtract one from here, subtract one from here, you're, you're stating that we ate a jelly bean that was green both the first time and the second time. And that's unknown. It could be 8 50th plus 8 49 plus 8 48 uh, You don't know that because you could have it the last time. So it's really difficult to do this kind of probability with or. Uh, there's a lot more you have to take into account, and it's, there's no really formula for it. It's more like you have to just kind of count it out, draw it out, um, each possibility. And with a number like 50, it's, it's kind of difficult. So that's why we don't use or, and instead we use and. So, why do we use and? Well, 
You may say, Ricardo, if we use and, doesn't that say that we're getting it the first time and the second time and the third time? Well, that's what our P says. Yes, probability of 1 and 2 and 3. But we're not counting probability of getting it green first time and second time and third time. We're going to be counting the inverse. We're going to be counting the exact opposite of that. We're going to count the probability of getting no greens. That's right, no green jelly beans. Even though I asked you how many ways can you get at least one green jelly bean, we're going to find no green jelly beans. That way, at the very end, we can find the probability of getting a green jelly bean is 1, or let's say equals, equals 1 minus the probability of getting none, right? Because obviously, um, the opposite of getting green one is getting no green one. And as we stated, one important aspect of probability is that probability of getting the opposite or probability of not getting something is one minus that. One being certain about it minus the probability of not getting it is the probability itself. So that's a very important topic because if I tell you you can get no green jelly beans this way, if you find the opposite of that, that means you're at least having one. You could have one, two, or three, but you're at least having one. So let's find this. Well, to calculate this, as I said earlier, it's multiplication, right? And this multiplication doesn't rely on whether you use a green jelly bean or not. Because this multiplication, we're not even using green jelly beans. We're using not green jelly beans. So, probability of one, probability of one, times probability of two. All right, let's write that a little better. Probability of... 2 times probability of 3. So, probability of 1 is not green jelly beans, right? So that's, there are about 42, because there are 8 green, so 42 not green jelly beans, divided by the total, 50. Now, we've eaten one of the not green jelly beans. We know that for a fact, because we're finding how many are not green. So we've eaten one of those, making that 41, and we've eaten one of the total, because anything you eat is out of the total, uh, divided by 49. So 41 divided by 49, times 40, finally, same idea. We ate one, that was not green, and out of the total, 40 by 48. So, now we can find our probability. And, if you take out your handy dandy back pocket calculators, we have 42 divided by 50, times 41 divided by 49, times 40 divided by 48. And that is about 41 over 70, my calculator tells me. But I want to find a decimal because 41 over 70 doesn't make much sense in this problem because there's only 50 jelly beans. So a decimal of that is about 0 0.586. I'm going around three decimal places. Okay. Well, as I said, the probability of getting green is 1 minus 0 0.586. Probability of green. So therefore, probability of getting a green is 0 0.414 or 41.4%. And that's how probable it is that you found out you're allergic to green jelly beans. Hi guys, thank you so much for watching my video. It really does mean a lot. And if you enjoyed this one, I encourage you to watch the next video of my series. And hey, if you're done with the series, there's always more mathematics to learn. Because remember, math matters.